what the best way is to proceed when we get an application for an internal review um, under PIPA, which handles um, complaints currently. But, but the information it concerns contains a mix of both personal and health information. Sure. Okay. Look, the ADT is sort of supportive of what I've said, and I've been involved in what I'm about to say. And I've been involved in some matters where the ADT had to actually do the review because the review wasn't done. So it's actually stood in some of your shoes and done the same job. It doesn't review its own review, obviously. When you receive a, let's call it a privacy complaint, I know there's a pre internal review stage which can be a complaint, but let's just call it a privacy complaint. Those of you that get them know that sometimes they use that pro forma that the privacy officers issue, sometimes they're written on a piece of paper, sometimes they're typed on a piece of paper, sometimes they're very hard to understand, but they meet the criteria of having to be in writing, and that's in the legislation. <coughs> you look at what it is. Whether they nominate an act or not, they might say, my privacy has been breached. So that's immediately making you think privacy, not access. You have a look at what they allege. This is where there's a bit of different views about the approach. One approach that I might take if I was in your shoes is to try and ascertain what the allegations were then maybe commence some sort of reasonable inquiry. Um, if they're low-level allegations, it's a very um, uh, hands-off, uh, removed inquiry. If they're very serious allegations, it might be more intense and you might have to get statements, you might have to interview people. But in any event, you've got, you've got a grievance. You've worked out what the grievance is. You have a look at how you might explore getting to the bottom of the grievance. And then the approach I would take is say, well, what have we got? Well, we've got some matters involving personal information, some matters involving health information. The pointy act is RIPA. You go to RIPA and it says, do your review as per part five of PIPA. Now, the reason for that is, is that RIPA came later. And the main reason I think it was a different piece of legislation was twofold. To send the important message about the sensitivity of health information as a discrete class of personal information, and also to capture the private sector and all those GPs that Elizabeth and I have to battle with every day. They're the big proper issue, not so much uh, the public hospitals and allied health. Um, there's a few of those. So you really deal with it like any internal review dealing with privacy. Where the health information becomes important is when you look at the health privacy principles, which are very robust and they're much easier to find a solution which assists or, or maybe um, captures the agency because of their flexibility. Those of you that have read them will talk about primary purpose. Primary purpose is wider than this room. Secondary purpose, well, that's anything beyond the width of this room. What is the primary purpose of health? Continuing care, do no harm. Um, this could be a primary purpose in health because I'm telling you how to use Cripper. And that's one of Cripper's objects. Uh, secondary purpose, marketing. Okay. So I really only go for the public sector to the health privacy principles in Schedule 1. That's the only real difference. There's some nuances which I think the resources and some of these questions touch on about health information and personal information. But it's all personal information if it's health information. I hope that's a practical answer. 